a demand for help. Demonstrators from a women's group rallied outside Haiti's ruined National Palace Tuesday. They're angry with their government and say the United Nations isn't doing enough to provide shelter. We don't have any tents. We haven't gotten help from anyone. Many Haitians say they've lost all faith in their government. They say they're pinning their hopes on their superpower neighbor to the north. If the Americans stay, my life will change. Everyone's life will be changed. We want the American to take over the country today. But some Haitians, like former Foreign Service official Daniel Suplice, suspect the U.S. may be using the disaster as an excuse to flex its military muscles. Some people believe that we are dealing with a new version of militarization of the area. And people do even think that the, the reason for the presence of those troops here is because of the friendship of this government with Cuba and Venezuela. Much of the help Haiti needs arrives here at the port of Port-au-Prince. The docks were badly damaged in the earthquake. U.S. military engineers and civilian contractors have put some of it back in working order. I had the opportunity to come and help. U.S. Army Colonel Robin Aiken is in charge of the U.S. military's logistical operation. Her unit's last assignment was in Baghdad. She says this one's completely different. The big difference is we're, we're, we're in a permissive environment. We're not in combat operations. We're, di we're in a permissive environment. So, you know, our soldiers walk around and, 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 and they're not wearing, you know, hardened IBA. They're, they're here to help the people of Haiti. If this were a combat mission, this U.S. Army vessel would be loaded up with 26 Abrams A-1 tanks. Instead, it is now carrying containers full of food, medicine, and military supplies. As of Tuesday, there were 7,200 U.S. troops on the ground in Haiti, most of them involved in providing security at U.N. food distribution points. 10,200 are on ships offshore for a total of 17,400 U.S. troops in the area. That's less than the peak troop number of 22,000 over a week ago. In the early stages of the relief effort, U.S. forces were sharply criticized by aid groups and some governments for giving landing priority at the Port-au-Prince airport to military and security flights instead of field hospitals and medicine. Latin American leaders like Venezuela's Hugo Chavez denounced what he called a militarized aid effort. UN Stabilization Force chief told Al Jazeera he's not worried that the U.S. is trying to take over the mission. Oh, not, not at all. I mean, it's uh, our very distinct uh, different uh, roles and uh, capacities. And uh, we have been in Haiti for many years as the UN mission, working with the Haitian government, with the Haitian police, uh, building institutions, and the presence of foreign troops like the U.S. or Canadians or many others is a very limited one. U.S. officers will not say when the U.S. military presence here will end, saying only that they'll stay as long as U.S. President Barack Obama wants them to. But if Haiti remains unstable, they may need to stay for a while. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Port-au-Prince.